Now, the federal government inquiry into the fly-in, fly-out workforce is winding up its public hearings across the country next month. The ABC's Four Corners program has done its own investigation into the mining boom and tonight the program looks into the impact it's having on regional communities. It went from being a real tight-knit community and family-friendly place where family-friendly rosters and you know everyone got along, there was sports, there was everything here for the kids and now it's fractured the town. You know, a lot of people have left. Um, a lot of people are now scared to walk at night because we don't know who's in town now. We are playing our part, you know. A hundred million dollars that, that, that we've committed over the last three, have spent over the last three years in social infrastructure, community infrastructure, daycare, recreational facility upgrades. Uh, you know, a million dollars that we provide each year on rental subsidies for people in, in community roles that are important for the, for, the, for the community. They're the sort of practical things that, that, that we're doing. Well, for more Four Corners reporter Andrew Fowler joins us now from Sydney. Good morning, Andrew. You've looked at the divide between the fly-in, fly-out workers and the locals in these towns. Uh, what are some of the social impacts? What are some of the things that you found? Well, some of the fly-in, fly-out people told us that they just get painted as people that get very rich and then just fly out with the cash. But they said, really, you know, it's very hard because they leave their families. Um, there are cases of, uh, of drunkenness, there are cases of domestic violence. So it's not all easy street as a fly-in, fly-out person. I mean, you get the reputation of being a miner, a very rich miner on $150,000. You fly in, you spend a few nights working, and then you go home to your family. What they're telling us is that it's really not that simple. But uh, one statistic that in your report, talking, looking at the town that you looked at, that one town, there was one figure that I found just astounding, and that was that rape and attempted rape was up 96%. Yes, exactly, that's right. I mean, there is a lot of that kind of uh, sexual violence that's being reported to us by people who actually were flying fly out people as well. And they're saying, but really, the problems are that there aren't enough family houses in the town to support the families and that's the argument that's also put up by the union. Now BHP say that they're doing their best and they are in fact trying to provide that need. And what was the response from locals? Well the locals say it's too little too late. I mean they just say look you know it's been a long time coming it's not as though this boom suddenly just swept in over the coastland from China. It's been coming for a long time so why didn't you in fact make those kind of provisions? And these kind of problems aren't just in this one town that you looked at. They're mirrored around the country where the mining boom is taking place in the north in WA and in other parts sure. of Queensland as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. In fact, there is a FIFO fly-in, fly-out inquiry, which is due to report pretty soon. And they will be making some kind of recommendations that the government are indicating that they're going to pick up on. And we spoke to the Assistant Treasurer, David Bradbury, and he said that some of the money from the so-called super profits tax will go back into those mining communities to solve some of these problems. And, and do things like that actually work? In, say in WA, they have the Royalties for Regions scheme, which is about putting money back into those regions and building infrastructure and services. Does, does extra money help? Well, I suppose it does, yeah, sure, extra money does help. But you've got to remember that revenue from royalties, in fact, is really just for the coal that belongs to the Australian people. So that's kind of a completely separate issue. It does tend to cloud the issue. After all, the people we spoke to, they live in, in Moranbar in central Queensland, and uh, the coal comes from their area, but they don't own the coal. Even though the royalties are paid for that coal, it, in fact, belongs to the entire Australian people. So the question is really about how much tax, how much taxation that the company should pay and whether that tax money should then go back into the regions, back into solve some of these social problems. And this is one of the issues that the program looked at was the divide between local government, state government and then federal government in terms of putting in place policies that can help uh, the culture in these towns. Yeah, sure, that's exactly right. I mean, the argument is that you need to have a coordinated effort to draw this stuff together so that there is, in fact, a solution which, uh, which solves some of these ongoing problems at all these different levels of government. Although, as dry as it may seem, talking about federal, state and, and local government, this is really where the action is. It's really where they've got to start to get themselves together. As I say, it's not exactly a boom that just came in overnight. This has been coming for a long time, and yet, in fact, the, the, the services that are provided... Uh, to the town just clearly aren't enough. Andrew Fowler, thank you very much for your time this morning. It's my pleasure.